Here are basic operating instructions for the department's Varian model 5055 atomic absorption spectrometer. Solution is aspirated from your container through a plastic capillary tube into a mixing chamber. The capillary is attached to a needle that forms part of a spray nozzle. Compressed air forms an aerosol of tiny droplets that mix with the settling in the chamber. A baffle knocks down all but the tiniest droplets, which go into the flame to be detected. A light beam from a hollow cathode lamp is directed through the flame for a total length of 10 centimeters. Here is the burner head in the instrument. Turn on the power for the instrument with the rocker switch on the far left. After some initial diagnostic steps, the load page will open on the computer screen. Use the arrow key to highlight the cookbook. Press the Enter key to proceed to the next window. Elements for analysis are alphabetized using their atomic symbols. In this demonstration, we're going to set up to do a copper analysis. Use the arrow key to highlight the calcium to europium section. Copper is listed just beyond the bottom of the window. Scroll down using the arrow key until the element is highlighted. Then press Enter. The following screens are used to set important instrumental parameters. We'll be operating in the absorbance mode for this demonstration. One can also operate in the emission mode. To make a change, use the right arrow key to move the highlighted region into the box on the right. Then move up or down to the highlighted area of your choice. Then press the Enter key to accept the operating mode. This instrument can hold two separate hollow cathode lamps at any time. We need to determine which position the lamp for our element is located. Open the door below the computer screen and look closely at the elements listed on the base of the lamp. In this particular case, we have a multi-element lamp that includes copper in position 1. A lever at the top left of this compartment is used to select the active lamp by directing the appropriate light beam to the flame using a mirror. Be sure the lever points to the lamp that you want to use. If necessary, use the arrow key to change the selection to the appropriate number on the screen and proceed to the next item. The amount of current that runs through the lamp will control the intensity of the light. The higher the current, the brighter the light beam. A bright light beam helps us obtain reliable measurements. However, high currents will result in shorter lifetime for the lamp. Follow the lamp manufacturer's advice for the active current level. We will accept the default value here. We'll also accept the value for the standby current. In some samples, particulates and or incompletely dry droplets can scatter the light and produce an erroneously high absorbance signal. This background can be subtracted out by using a second lamp, in this case a deuterium discharge lamp, to determine the background absorbance and subtract it from the apparent signal. We will not be using this feature in this simple demonstration. Our instrument is set up to use a mixture of air and acetylene to produce a flame. Be sure that this is the combination on the right-hand side and press Enter. The most commonly used wavelength for the element of interest is listed at the top. Other wavelengths can be chosen. One of these may be more appropriate in situations where a second element interferes because of a coincidentally nearby absorption line. We will use the default value in today's experiment. We'll also use the default value for the slit width. You may have created special settings that you wish to come back to many times in the future. Then you may save these parameters as your own special method. We'll not do that today. At this point, turn on the lamp by pressing the Optimize button. The instrument takes a minute while the lamp warms up. Eventually, you will see a broad line move across the screen to indicate that the detector is responding to the light from the hollow cathode lamp. In the right-hand drawer below the instrument, remove one of the Varian business cards. These cards have two targets printed on them that we will use to help us center the light beam along the center of the burner slot. Remove the safety plate in front of the burner. Position the vertical line on the card directly over the slot on the burner. We would like that beam to be centered on the line as the card is moved along the slot. If that slot is not parallel with the beam, 
Squeeze the metal control grips and rotate the slot until the alignment is proper. If the beam is aligned in the target on the right-hand side of the slot and on the left-hand side of the slot, everything is in position as it should be. You can control the position of the burner up and down or forward and back with this pair of knobs on the left-hand side of the front panel. Replace the safety shield on the front before proceeding. Check to see that the drain tube is properly positioned in the waste container. For our instrument, there should be a few inches of space between the open tube and the liquid level. The flame produces gases that we don't want to breathe, so these are drawn off by an exhaust manifold. Open the vent at the ceiling using a meter stick. The mechanism can be a bit stiff, so use the short edge of the stick as demonstrated here. Catalina is housed in a safety closet behind the instrument. You need to turn on the tank. You can access the valve through the small trap door in the closet. Leave the control on the regulator itself alone. Instead, turn on the valve on the top of the tank. One half turn counterclockwise should be sufficient to turn on the gas. Note the position of the indicator needles. The indicator on the right tells us how much is left in the tank. We want to be sure that it reads at least 100 pounds per square inch. The indicator on the left shows the pressure that is being delivered to the instrument. Although it is a bit high in this picture, it will drop down to, into the range of 12 to 15 psi when the burner on the instrument is turned on. Turn on the burner with the black button on the left hand side of the instrument. The flame should burn with a bright ribbon of color along the edge of the slot. This ribbon should have a uniform straight edge to it. If there are any breaks in the ribbon, ask the instructor for help in cleaning the burner head. The ratio of the acetylene to air can be controlled with this knob on the front panel. A fuel-rich flame looks yellow. A fuel-lean flame burns with a faint blue color. You may want to optimize the signal by varying the fuel ratio. At this point, change the detector output to the signal mode using the arrow keys and the enter button. The display will read absorbance. Aspirate deionized water and watch the absorbance reading. If the display does not return to zero, re-zero it by pressing the Alt and Read buttons simultaneously. Begin by aspirating solution from one of your standards, one of the more concentrated ones. Maximize the signal by moving the burner head in and out and up and down. You may also want to adjust the acetylene ratio. Another critical feature is the rate at which the solution is aspirated into the flame. This can be controlled by moving the needle for the spray nozzle small distances with this adjustment screw. Please ask the instructor for help if you wish to adjust this parameter. Rinse with deionized water or the blank solution in between the standard or sample solutions. See that the reading returns to zero. If it does not, the instrument has drifted. Press the Alt and Read buttons simultaneously and repeat the measurement on the previous solution. Keep the new value and throw away the previous reading. The signal is inherently noisy. Record five readings at evenly spaced time intervals and use the average for your calibration point or sample absorbance. At the end of your work, rinse deionized water through the system for several minutes. Then turn the flame off by pressing the red button on the front left. 
Never leave the flame unattended. If you leave the room, turn the flame off first. After turning off the flame, turn the acetylene off at the tank. Turn the main power switch off. And close the exhaust vent. and sign the logbook.